With the JMPD first quarter performance report now out for the public to assess, we asked David Bruce, an independent research consultant, what all this data means for crime in Johannesburg. And this is for the record. Now, recently the JMPD released its uh, performance report, um, pretty much giving us an idea of where they are when it comes to tackling the issues of crime. But what are the realities on the ground uh, when it comes to crime in Johannesburg? Right, well, well, well that's a good question. And um, you see, the, the one thing that I would raise first as a, as a concern about um, policing in Johannesburg is that I didn't see clear information on that question in the report from the JMPD. And so one of the things that that just highlights is the fact that there isn't a consolidated system of um, government, governance and management of public safety in the metropolitan area. So what we have is, uh, well, you could call it two police systems. You might say that there's more, but the, 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 the one policing system is a national policing system, which is governed in part from Pretoria, governed in part from the provincial headquarters, then there's also um, station commanders. Um, I'm not quite sure what the number of police stations is in Johannesburg. I think it's in the region of 30 or so. And in Johannesburg, it's not entirely clear what the number of SAPS personnel who are uh, deployed in Johannesburg is. But I, I, I would estimate it's maybe something like six or 7,000. And then you've got the JMPD currently at about 4,000 members. So you've got two um, policing systems, but you don't have, uh, you know, at the center, a system which is providing an overall analysis of the crime situation in Johannesburg. So, so what would w one would want to have then is a system where, um, where there's uh, crime information um, being produced about Johannesburg. Um, which is broken down in terms of the different parts of Johannesburg. So, you know, potentially if one's looking at Johannesburg, you know, as an area, one would, one would want to disaggregate it in some ways. One, and, 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 and how one would do that in a useful way would itself be an interesting question. But the one thing would be about, for instance, the inner city areas and understanding the characteristic types of crime in those areas. Another part of which would be, for instance, in, you know, more affluent and suburban areas and talking about, you know, what are the, you know, typical crime problems in those kinds of areas and so on. So, you know, but, but you know, at the first level, I would want to see um, if we were to be, um, you know, tap, tackling crime in Johannesburg, I would want to see um, much clearer information um, being pre produced about the metropolitan area of Johannesburg, the crime situation in the Johannesburg metropolitan area, and then a clearer picture about how the people responsible for policing in the Johannesburg area are understanding the question to do with, 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 with crime priorities. And so cu currently we just aren't getting that kind of analysis of the crime situation. And that, you know, in itself tells us a lot, of, a, a lot about how dysfunctional our current policing system is. I mean, that's a lot to worry about when you say that, because the, the question then becomes, is what is currently there from a policing uh, measures uh, system relevant and effective enough to tackle the issue of crime? The direct answer to that is, is that we simply can't answer that question. The, 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 so, so, so what one, one really needs okay, is, and, and interestingly, because it's, currently there's a bit of a debate about this issue and it seems to be in some ways a bit controversial, the idea that there could be um, consolidated governance of policing resources at the metropolitan level. So is it a numbers game or the quality of policing that has to change in order to eff 
effectively fight crime. You know, one of the things it, it hinges around is a question around police visibility. Police need to maintain visibility. But the research that's been done on police visibility shows that police visibility itself, broadly in the community, doesn't actually have any impact on reducing levels of crime. That doesn't mean that one should dismiss um, the importance of visibility altogether because the one thing that visibility can do is that it co can contribute to um, reassuring members of the, of the public. And so that suggests that we should be moving towards more of a kind of two-tier type of policing system where one should have a, a policing body which has, you know, is seen more in terms of this concept of a kind of professional policing agency. And then one should have, you know, one would want to supplement that with some kind of auxiliary policing system. Um, with people who are, um, whose training is much shorter and, and you know, who have a, a more limited um, understanding of the law and um, who are expected to perform a much more limited role in the policing system. So David, let's talk about bylaws for a moment. The JMPD has committed itself to reinforcing the city's bylaws. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But how do you reinforce bylaws when your population itself doesn't understand or know what those bylaws are? Bylaws are a complex body of law that in some um, cities in South Africa there's you know, at least 20 or 30 different bylaws on, 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 you know, on, the, on the city statute book. One thing that this, this raises about bylaws is that <clears throat> they are quite kind of political in nature. They, you know, uh, you know, so, so, you know, um, bylaws, um, you know, support, might support certain types of economic activity. But, you know, they might be, um, you know, enforcement of bylaws might also have a, 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 a quite a negative impact on other people who are essentially just trying to make a living through economic activity um, in, 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 the, in the city. And so kind of, you know, part of the management of, 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 of the implementation of bylaws is how to negotiate these different interests and how to try and kind of reconcile them, how to kind of try and kind of optimize these, um, um, you know, the, the, the implementation of bylaws in a way that, you know, doesn't um, prejudice, um, you know, the, 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 the interests of, of, of different um, constituencies who have a, have a legitimate interest in, you know, in being, um, included and having their interests considered in the way in which the city is governed.